Welcome to the Big Brother Breakdown with Jolene. Welcome to the BB Breakdown with Jolene. That's me. Hey guys, welcome to the Big Brother Breakdown with Jolene. That's me. Long time no talk about Big Brother. Well, I did just do a sip and key with Busy Blue, where we talked a little bit about the reality stars going to the Hearts of Reality Charity. If you want to check that out, I'll link this at the end of the video. I'll link that video at the end of this video. You guys understand what I'm saying. This is weird talking about Big Brother. We're so close to Christmas. Happy holidays to everyone. Hope you're doing well. If this is your first time on my channel, smash that like and subscribe and the bell so you get notified when I go live and talk about all the many things I talk about. Okay. But there's news coming out of the big brother world that I wanted to address with you. Uh, we have some news on Zach Rance of BB 16, old Rancy pants, the creator of the fruit loop dingus. And we also have some Memphis Christmas Dominique news, uh, to catch up on. And there is word that there might be a celebrity big brother three this winter, which I'm so hoping for. So let's just start with that, uh, first. So there's been a lot of talk. Screen rant has done quite a few articles talking about celebrity BB us three after two, it was just canceled. I guess I so enjoyed celebrity big brother. If you guys follow me for my big brother updates, I love it. I love Tamar. I love that second season. Season one was okay too, but season two was so good. And I wanted another celebrity big brother season. Now I think since BB 22 was such a dis disappointment and let down to a lot of fans, I think maybe CBS is considering this and not because they feel bad because it was a letdown, but because we are in another lockdown with the pandemic and COVID-19. So I think they see this as an opportunity to put out uh, a show when people are in quarantine and they'll probably watch. So their numbers uh, will be up. And that's just my opinion about it. I think that's probably why they're doing it more so than they feel bad for putting a trash all-star cast together. But, you know, you did try. You did try. You gave us a season, I guess, if that is what we're calling a season. I guess that's who won again. Anyways, we're moving on. A lot of places are talking about it. It's being speculated on Reddit. So I'm just putting it out there so that it'll happen because I want a celebrity big brother for this winter. I think it'd be amazing. And I think we deserve it. And I still love big brother, despite it disappointing me. Time Time and time again, little Connie Crows. Uh, all right. So hopefully that's happening. People are talking about it on Twitter and even Evil Dick was tweeting about it saying that he thinks it does make sense that they might be doing that. Allegedly, maybe, possibly, kind of. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see another celebrity Big Brother US. I just love CBB and I don't think two seasons was enough. I mean, I want to do more impressions. <laughs> I loved doing Dean Lohan impressions. Okay. I loved it. I loved Lolo Jones. I mean, she's on the challenge now, which I'm covering. On Thursday, I don't know why I did this. On Thursdays with Miranda, aka Honestly Hanukkah, on YouTube. So check that out. Okay, next up is the Zach Rance. Zach Rance uh, from BB16. You guys remember little cutie Zach Rance. He uh, was pretty much the comic relief for BB16, which was not one of my favorite seasons, full disclosure. It introduced us to Nicole. You're so mean and so mean, who is back to her life doing Coco Caliente podcast with her fiance Vic and their wedding day actually just passed, like recently, recently, where they were supposed to be in Turks and Caicos getting married, but they didn't because pandemic and duh, because um, it's 2020. And if you scheduled a destination wedding or a wedding in 2020, it probably didn't happen. And if it did, you probably had a super spreader event. So Congratulations. But Zach Rance came out recently as bisexual. Zach Rance, easy on the eyes. I was hoping he would come back for the all-star season of Big Brother or come back in general, but he's went in a different direction. He went in a direction of uh, mental health. And also he's been pretty honest about what goes on behind the scenes with Big Brother and production and things like that, that I don't know if they'd have him back because he kind of showed us behind the curtains when he was talking to Kat Dunn and other podcasters about Big Brother. But he recently came out as bisexual and he comes out uh, saying that he hooked up with Frankie Grande, which if you watch BB16, it's no surprise that they hooked up. I remember watching the live feeds and seeing people capture screenshots where they had just been like hanging out and then there was maybe like a little liquid love spot on his shorts. And, uh, you know, there was cuddling. I mean, there was lots of things going on. BB 16. Remember Christine and Cody that 
didn't make any sense. And then, you know, that was before Nicole was in so mean. And she was with Hayden, who was a cutie pants. Um, and we could tell that Frankie and Zach did have chemistry, whether you are a Frankie fan or not. They even had a couple name. Zanky. So uh, Zach is coming out and saying that, hello world, I'm bisexual and he wants to own his true self. Um, he came out as bisexual during a virtual conversation on Tuesday with Mental Health Collection with Love, which also included season 21's Tommy Brocco. During the chat, uh, Rance, who's now 30, opened up about his sexuality and said he hooked up with his season 16 co-star, Frankie Grande, the older brother of Ariana Grande, which, <laughs> how could we forget? Frankie won't let us. After the show wrapped in 2014, I can't believe it was that long ago, and I just started watching Survivor, the Survivor season that Caleb was on, who was also on BB-16, and I didn't really care much for Caleb on BB-16, but I really liked Caleb in Survivor, and I just saw the episode where, spoiler alert, he gets medevaced out because he had like heat stroke or something. So um, Zach said that he hooked up with uh, Frankie after the season wrapped. And he said, I've been straight my entire life. I've only liked women, but on Big Brother, Frankie and I got super, super close. We saw it and we saw it on your shorts. Uh, I fell in love with who he was as a person. Super funny, super smart, good looking guy. And as time went on, we got close. So I wasn't sure if I had feelings for him or not. I've always been straight. So it was never a thing to like guys. Rant said that after their season of the hit CBS series was over, he and Grande, 37, had a relationship that was more than just friends. Uh, Grande's rep did not immediately respond to people's requests for a comment, but Zach says he was the first guy I'd ever hooked up with, and after that night, I was very unsure about the direction of my sexuality because I like women parts. The Florida native said he went on to hook up with a second man, a photographer at a photo shoot. I was like, whoa, second guy I hooked up with. Okay, where am I right now? Uh, he recalled. But the more I thought about being with a guy, you know, making out is one thing, but doing more than making out with a guy is something that I don't want to do. And I'd never tried it, he added. But I want to come out and say that I enjoyed hooking up with Frankie and the other guy I hooked up with. Clearly, I enjoyed it because things went down. Uh, Rance continued, I just wanted to come out and be transparent and come out and say I am bisexual, even though I do lean more toward heterosexuality. But I wanted to clear the air on that because it's funny, a lot of people reach out to me uh, about the Frankie thing, and I never came out and said I'm bisexual, but I am. So they were close friends after Big Brother. I don't know if they're still close friends. I don't ever see them posting on social media together. And that is 2020's way in 2019. And just now the way to know if someone is a close friend of another person. Congratulations, Zach. I think this is great uh, that he feels very comfortable in his own skin and being who he is. And I am all for that. Then I noticed that Jose and Zach, I don't know what is going on with them, but uh, as Miranda would say, but <laughs> Jose was posting some interesting things on his Twitter. Here, I'll show you. And <laughs> he had to give, he wrote, had to give Poppy a rub down. If you want to see the full videos, head over to my OnlyFans. So they are they doing an OnlyFans collab, like crossover? I collab with lots of YouTubers. You guys see it on my channel. But maybe me and Miranda need to do this. Um, I don't think I don't think anyone would pay for that, but I you don't know. I mean, they'd pay probably for Miranda. So here is the latest that did I already play this? I might have played it too many times, if you know what I mean, guys. Too many times. Okay, so this, if you head over to the OnlyFans, you can see more of. If you I mean, that looks like a very nice back rub, shoulder rub, nipple rub. Who doesn't like a good areola stroke, you know? Um, and we got underpants on and just real, he's got that, you know, man spread. You know how guys just like to spread their legs all the time and take up all the, you know, space on earth uh, with no regard. And yeah, so this, you know, this video kind of makes me um, lose my breath a little. It's, uh, it's pretty hot. I mean, it's, it. I'm not gonna, you know, what is, what's the saying? I'm not gonna kick it out of the kitchen. That's about a saying, Jolene. But yeah, so this is what they're doing. And I've, like I said, I've watched it a few hundred times. And then uh, <laughs> Jose's Twitter is next level. Um, then you can just scroll down and you can see this, which I, I wish I could do with my butt because I feel like 
his butt is talking to me and we're having a great conversation. Thank you. I did just curl the front of my hair, not the back. Jose's butt. Yeah. Cause why I curl the back? You're people are only going to see the front. <laughs> Thank you. I, I did do a deep condition recently. You are really complimentary Jose's butt. Thank you. Yes. I, I experimented with a different eyeshadow combo. I don't know if I blended it all the way. Thank you, Jose's butt. I am trying. I am. Okay. Well, I'll see you at, uh, when the pandemic's over maybe somewhere, but Okay, don't yell at me. Now it's yelling at me. Why is his butt yelling at me? And then we can head over to Jose's Instagram because who wouldn't after that? I mean, I I'm just a, a, a red-blooded American gal, as they say. So I head over and uh, then there's just more oil. There's more oiling. There's more rubbing. It's, um, it's everyone's got abs. I don't. I don't know how you have pandemic abs. I have a pandemic baby, but I'm not pregnant, but it just... I'm not pregnant, but I play one, a pregnant lady on the internet or in my life um, and eat like one. <laughs> so Jose says 2020 has brought us some effed up SHIT, but I honestly have to say this right here is the best way to end the year. Say what y'all want. Head to my OnlyFans. This is very soothing. You know, if you are having trouble, you're not able to sleep, you just want to relax, you have an anxiety. I feel like this cures my anxiety. Just watching them. You know, just uh, lubriderm each other up. Just two good, good, good buddies. Um, both wearing Calvin Klein underwear, you know, just, okay. So, <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, and look at Casey since 1987. She says two hotties. Casey, back off. You already in a relationship. Then we have Zach and uh, Jose in a, in a very lovely embrace. Just this is exactly how my husband and I embrace every morning. Only we're wearing sweatshirts and sweatpants. And um, yeah, so pretty much the same. Um, hashtag relatable. And then Zach, whose butt doesn't see the sun, clearly, uh, but is still tanner than my entire body and face that does see the sun. Way to go, Zach Rance. Way to, you know, live your life, be you, do what you got to do. And thanks for being honest with everybody. And thanks for that Lubriderm video. I, that was, I, it was a good video. I don't know. I'm, I'm a content creator, but I don't ever create that good a content. Speaking of good content, let's move on to not good content. <laughs> As you guys know, um, Memphis and Christmas are officially a couple. They came out, they were like, the world must know that we're in love. And they hit all the outlets, Us Weekly, you know, all the, all the big time places. But this week, we are hearing from an ex involved in this. So I did a lot of research into this, you guys, more research than I wanted to do and more research than I'd like to admit. I listened to Reality Steve. Now, I don't know much about Reality Steve. I know he's dating Kat Dunn from um, BB21. And apparently the guy, he has a huge following. I never knew about him. I think maybe he covered The Bachelor or other reality shows that I wasn't into at the time. But he had Dominique, who was Memphis's ex, the person he was dating, the woman he was dating while he was on, in the house, on his podcast. And it was a very eye-opening interview. I listened to that. I also listened to Memphis and Christmas on Cat Dunn's uh, Conspire Away Bitches, I think that's what it is, podcast, which I didn't want to, but I did for you guys. You're welcome. Then I did what I really didn't want to do and heard that those two were also on Coco Caliente, which is, you're so mean, it's Nicole Franzel's podcast uh, with Vic. And let me tell you, after listening to that podcast, they have a lot of sponsors, and Vic is a really good podcast host. Um, I didn't, I didn't know much about the Vicster other than seeing him on Big Brother, but uh, he's really smart. He carries a conversation well in an interview, and Nicole laughs a lot, so it works. Okay, so Reality Steve had on his latest podcast, he had an interview with Josh, and he is the ex-husband of Tasha from The Bachelorette, which I'm watching this season and doing recaps, so make sure you guys check those out, and Dominique, who is the ex of Memphis. I learned a lot of things on this podcast. I'm going to break it down for you quickly so you guys can move on with your lives if you're interested, but if you're not, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like like, comment, and subscribe on your way out. All right. And <laughs> follow me on social media. Uh, Dominique, I, I really liked listening to her speak because she's very Midwestern. Um, and I feel like she has some kind of Chicago Midwestern accent that I can totally get down with for obvious reasons. And she was saying that her and Memphis 
knew each other for years, but they were always just friends. And then right before COVID hit and the quarantine happened, he hit her up and was like, hey, um, let's, you know, go out to dinner. And she's like, I thought you had a girlfriend, but apparently he had just broken up with someone. And she said, well, I'm not really your type and you're not really my type, that sort of thing. And he said, well, you know, my type hasn't really been working for me and your type hasn't worked for you. So why don't we do this? And they did. And they started hanging out and went to dinner and then they dated all through the quarantine. And she basically picked up from Chicago and went down to Florida where he was and stayed with him and then other Chicago people. They kind of had like a Chicago Memphis Dominique quarantine time. And then he was contacted by big brother for the all-star season. And she said, you should do it. This is a good time because it's quarantine and businesses are down and you run a restaurant. It's not a good time for restaurants. And he was just asked on to be an alternate, which we all had heard rumblings about. So he thought, hey, I'll just be quarantined for a couple of weeks. I'll make my money. I'll come home. Turns out, dun, 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 Josh Martinez and Casey got COVID. So we got Keisha and Memphis. So Memphis ends up going in full time. Now, while he's in there, Dominique is at home. She said he was sending letters, having like his person, you know, they have like, you know, PAs or a PR person that works with them, um, their diary room people, when they would tweet for them, you know, they would send her letters or, you know, just keep her kind of, she had a contact at Big Brother that she could reach out to if she had, you know, questions and things like that. And apparently he wrote her a letter even while he was in the house, before he was in the house, latent when he was in the house, from the jury house, and professing how excited he was to start his life with her. And this is all according to Dominique and Reality Steve, who interviewed her, actually said that he read these letters and it seemed like they were pretty serious. You know, the fact that he wanted her to move to Florida. And while he was in there, she was helping take care of his poke restaurant, which we saw him you know, uh, wearing the shirts for and things like that to advertise it. She also was, they were going to start a restaurant together. They were in the beginning stages. I don't know how far they were into it. It's the Yamas restaurant or something. And she was on the material for investors. So she's wondering like, is he going to take me off, uh, the investor, uh, proposal that you send out when you try to get people to invest in your business. Uh, and fun fact, he was wearing that t-shirt in his photo shoot with Christmas. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? That business she was supposed to be working on with him. He was like, oh, hey, I'll still promote it just with a different chick. So as far as Dominique's concerned, she said she's over it. She wasn't there to slander anybody. She really stood by his side, especially when the fans weren't on Memphis's side for the season. And she feels like the person she knows would never do the things that were, were being alleged that he did, like called David the N-word. They couldn't quite make out what he had said while talking to Cody and the stuff about Ian when he was making jokes about Ian and Ian's autism. And then when the rumors came out that he had kissed Christmas or Christmas had kissed him or they had kissed each other when he pulled up the blanket and she said she was whispering something to him, the contact she had at Big Brother reached out and said that did not happen. Don't worry. So she had every reason to believe that he was going to come home. He was excited for their life together once he was out of the house. So there was no reason for her to believe that that wasn't the case. Um, however, she said once he got out of the house, things were very different. And he stayed off social media for about three days. And it was great. And then he got on. And she said he was allegedly very upset. And the fact that he didn't get more followers. And that he didn't have as many fans as he, as he thought he would. And the backlash he received. And slowly she saw a change in him. And that's when they decided to kind of take a break. Now, on this break, she went back to Chicago. And then all of a sudden, she gets a call from him and goes, hey, uh, yeah, some pictures with me and Christmas might be coming out. Because we, she came down here and we saw some fans. And she's like, okay, I already saw some pictures on Instagram. But he didn't tell her that the pictures were, in fact, a staged photo shoot that he and Christmas had planned through Us Weekly and People and all those magazines and publications to come out as a couple. So the reason Dominique feels the need to come forward and just tell her truth is because she feels as though she doesn't feel like she was cheated on, but she does feel like their relationship was totally disregarded. And especially now that they're posting things together, Memphis and Christmas, and she feels that they're taking little jabs at her with their hashtags. And she feels like they were just taking little jabs at her and that she's heard Christmas in interviews and online 
make reference to maybe it wasn't a serious relationship that Memphis was in with Dominique, but Dominique said it was. I mean, they were planning. She spent all quarantine with him, even though, you know, they weren't together a full year, but they had plans for the future. She was helping take care of his business, his poke restaurant, like I said, which he was not compensating her for, which I thought was weird. She said, you know, like any good girlfriend would do. And I'm thinking I would ask for some money because <laughs> why would I do your work for free? Do you do your work for free? No. So I don't do your work for free. The Memphis Christmas thing, it makes sense that they're together. Anyone who watched the season saw the chemistry they had. We saw Memphis's preseason interview where he said if he had to have a showman's in the house, it would be Christmas Abbott. And they did. They had a chemistry. They seemed to get along. But hearing Dominique explain how Memphis wasn't happy with his social media numbers and, you know, was always thinking of things in terms of business and making more money off his appearance on Big Brother, it does also make sense that Memphis would head toward the Christmas route because showmances tend to get more attention. They're marketable, whether they're likable or not. And you can make money off that. And you can kind of brand that sort of thing. And people seem to be more interested in reality romance than they are just single people they hate. So it's like a person gets off the show and they're hated, nothing. But two hates together equals a somewhat positive sometimes. So I think that's what's going on here. So then she also um, mentioned that she doesn't miss him. She feels fine uh, moving on. And she actually kind of misses her ex, which uh, allegedly was some hockey player and uh, like a professional hockey player, which upgrade. She had made a joke about this on Twitter, something like this isn't it, I'm not heartbroken. I'm just paraphrasing this joke. I have been with a Stanley Cup winner or something like that. Or hockey players either won the Stanley Cup or been to the Stanley Cup like a professional hockey player. So I've been with a winner. So I'm not too hurt that I lost to someone who got fifth place. And I was like, oh shit, that's good. Uh, she also denied that she released the D picks that we saw at Memphis. And those D picks are from five years ago. And she says she thinks Memphis knows who released them. So it was good to hear from Dominique. Looks like you have a bright future ahead of you and it sounds like a lovely woman. And yes, if you're going to move on to a new relationship, don't be dismissive of your previous relationship. It's even more hurtful. Acknowledge that they were important, but this other thing just popped up and you had to act upon it, you know, because when you get Christmas, Memphis just wants Christmas all year. And there's a reason why Christmas is only one day a year. Okay. Why it's only one season because no one can handle Christmas 365 days a year. Good luck, Memphis. Good luck. So then I moved over to uh, Kat Dunn's podcast because, of course, Reality Steve, I think he's still dating Kat Dunn. So then he did a plug for Kat Dunn. So then I watched, listened to her podcast. So it all worked. You know, I'm just stuck in this loop of learning about the showmance. Christmas and Memphis both spoke a lot about the hate they've received outside of the house. Christmas talked about the microaggressions and how she didn't know what a microaggression was. She was just super aggressive when she competes because she's a professional athlete. And now she's done multiple interviews where she just keeps saying, I was a professional athlete and I was a CrossFitter and a weightlifter on the Olympic level. I didn't, you know, get to the Olympics, but I was Olympic. I, I don't know, you guys, maybe she qualified for it, whatever. And then she also was a pit woman in NASCAR. So she's just, she's so, such a professional athlete that she's just aggressive and <laughs> no one's contacted her. Um, none of the people, uh, the people of color from the house. And so she's like, I guess I got to figure this out on my own. It's like, yes, Christmas, you do have to figure it out on your own. And they don't know you anything. You just you got to figure it out on your own. And then she went on to say that there's no way she can be racist because back in high school and college, she was on some kind of alliance for people of color in some realm, shape or form. I, I don't know. And she got her nose broken for sticking up for somebody who wasn't white or wasn't straight or I, it was a lot. High school was a long time ago. And I, I mean, look at the current situation we're on, you know, half the baby boomers we know, our parents were peace loving hippies, smoking weed, getting drunk, going to Woodstock. And now they're like, don't take my damn taxes to help any poor people and not everybody's parents. But I'm just saying things change over the years. Okay. So oh, you better stand for my flag. And you were like, you guys used to have sex on the flag. You guys did acid on the flag. You, you like, what is happening right now? Huh? Um, so people change and uh, not always for the best, but Christmas says she's not racist. So I guess she's not racist. And Memphis was basically like, don't judge us outside of the house because you don't really know us try to get to know us. And I was like, um, no thanks. But I did listen to these podcasts. So 
uh, that's the best that I can do. But they said there was chemistry between them. They also said this on Coco Caliente podcast, and they just couldn't deny the chemistry they had. And they took some time after the season. They went back to their respective uh, lovers, her boyfriend, his girlfriend, and uh, they realized that they just they couldn't be apart anymore. And apparently Christmas's boyfriend, who she had only been with through the pandemic, but she spoke as though they had been together for so long and they were planning this life. So it's it's a little weird, you guys. But apparently he was just like, do you like Memphis? And she was like, I do. And he was like, okay. And that was that. It was so, have you guys ever seen a breakup that civil in your life? But maybe, just maybe, this guy, Christmas's ex, was like, whew. Oh gosh, <laughs> I was like hiding her car keys every night and now I don't even have to worry. <laughs> every time I saw a Mercedes, I would have a panic attack and now I'm free falling. They parted ways amicably and Dominique says Memphis reached out to her not that long ago, hoping they could be friends. No, 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 you're almost 40. She's 30 something and I think she's 30 something. She looks like she's 20 something, Dominique, but... You don't need any more friends, Memphis. You got a lot of friends, okay? Like Jerry said, maybe a few too many lady friends. And Christmas, <laughs> you think Christmas is going to let you be friends with that hot girl? You're funny. You're funny, Memphis. But watching them on these interviews, it's definitely, they are, uh, hmm. It's probably passionate right now, but boy, oh boy, this just looks like it's going to end horribly. But God bless. He said he can't keep his hands off her. <laughs> and then they finally addressed, I think it was Cat. It was Cat or Coco Caliente. I get confused. One of those podcasts they addressed, uh, it was Cat's podcast. They addressed the um, infamous Memphis pre-interview, uh, pre-season interview with E.T. where he said that Christmas Abbott. So we're like, oh my gosh, this guy's had the hots for all these years. Turns out. That was the only name he could think of at the time. And he had seen her because he worked for a hotel chain that she was having a Big Brother watch party at years ago. So she he saw her. And at the time, he was like, oh, she looks good. And then he like followed her on Instagram. I guess he gets these Instagram crushes. And he did start following me. So... Uh, 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 <laughs> Christmas, don't kill me. Did you guys just hear something? I thought I heard a car. So, so much was talked about. Christmas in Memphis were just, you know, they're happy, you guys. They're happy. They want everyone to know they're happy. And like I said, God bless. Despite Christmas saying in these interviews, she was, she said, I was shocked to find out I was racist, to find out people thought I was racist. And it's like most racists are. Christmas in Memphis said that their antics are going to be even crazier outside the house. I think Memphis said something like that. Like, we're going to be even crazier. It's like. Great. Yay. Good luck, Memphis. <laughs> so that's my breakdown, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting my channel. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, comment below. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Do you love that Jose, Zach video as much as I did, the Lubriderm, where they're just like, areola love. Oh. Uh. Mm -hmm. Let me know what you think. You guys are wonderful. Follow me on social media at Jolene Lenzer on Instagram and at JoleneBB22 on Twitter. I appreciate all of you. Stay safe. Stay warm. Happy holidays. I'll be back soon with more Big Brother Tea news and gossip. Bye. <laughs>